gloom about the effects of China's slowdown on Africa can be overdone. We're chatting with Martin a little bit earlier this morning uh, about a paper he's written for the World Economic Forum, which makes this very point, but I won't be quoting him. There's no question that the short-term trade picture is bleak. Standard Bank's economists think that the value of China-Africa trade could be down by as much as 25% year-on-year for 2015. But this follows 15 years in which China-Africa trade grew by 2,000% from around $5 billion in 2000 to about $220 billion in 2014. This trade explosion has changed both China and Africa. Many Chinese firms are now deeply invested in Africa and increasingly look to this continent for growth opportunities that are getting harder to find at home. In 2014, for instance, Chinese sales to Africa increased by 14% twice as fast as the overall growth rate for Chinese exports. Africa also presents attractive opportunities for Chinese construction and manufacturing firms that are most vulnerable to China's rebalancing. After all, a lot of Africa now looks like China did when it began its takeoff. Lots of potential, but far too little infrastructure. Further, some African countries could benefit from a weaker yuan that would cut the cost of Chinese goods and services that they import. Countries such as Ethiopia, Kenya, and Mozambique have posted trade deficits in recent years owing to high import volumes of Chinese capital goods. A weaker yuan will mean more heavy equipment and more infrastructure at lower cost. Lastly on China, and I don't think we speak enough about this, China's switch from an investment-led to a consumption-based growth model is actually good news for Africa in the longer term. The World Bank's modelers think that over the next 15 years, the negative impacts will be far outweighed by the positive changes. The net effect of the evolution of the Chinese economy towards consumption will add 4.7 percent, that's $181 billion, to Africa's GDP by 2030, compared to China's current path, while Kenya, Botswana, and Nigeria will be the biggest winners, with only Zambia likely to experience a small net loss.